Hi, this is Joe Vest. I want to show you something you might want to consider to your Red Team infrastructure by automating some components to your C2 infrastructure. Before I begin, let's look at this infrastructure that I'm working with. So in this case, I'm using um, an AWS base command and control infrastructure. AWS doesn't really matter. It really doesn't matter what you're working with. What does matter is you're following some sort of implementation or a plan that, that you use for your normal development uh, deployment processes. But in this case, I'm using a AWS CloudFront redirector, and all that is is an HTTP proxy. So I'm getting that from a blog post that Black Hills Information Security released in 2019. And this document is really, or this blog post is really, really good at walking through all the manual processes of setting up the HTTP proxy settings. The real difference is, and this is what I'm trying to encourage you to add, is instead of manually creating those, you can use something like Ansible or even command line, other command line tools to deploy and build these pieces. This whole range that I show here is being created through a simple bash script and the AWS CLI command line tools. So all of the resources are actually being built from the actual Linux boxes themselves being deployed for a redirector on the team server, the CloudFront distribution information, the SSH keys, and all of the firewall and traffic control is all being created through a, a script. Again, this can be bat, um, this can be a bash script, Ansible, Terraform, whatever it is you're using. What I really want to show is the end results of something that you might want to consider adding to something you're already doing. So I have this cloud redirector. I also have this Apache redirector. So this I use Apache redirectors as a way of doing something called smart redirection. I just want to have a little bit more control and make some decisions on the actual HTTP traffic that's coming in. So I'm starting with this HTTP rules, this uh, redirect rules project. And this allows me to have some, some baseline configuration over what I trust or don't trust as far as it's HTTP traffic. It allows me to have some sandbox protection and such. So I use this as the base and I add a few more components to it. So the la that's, this will help me handle all of my HTTP traffic that eventually points over to my team server. And this team server itself, the only way to have traffic go through this is the C2 traffic must follow this path. And then I have an out of band management path that actually uses an SSH tunnel to one system to pivot over to another. So this actually has an SSH pivot that acts as a, uh, a read, um, as an SSH pivot to connect to this box. You can also do something like a VPN as well. Either way, you want to protect this from the, uh, from the general internet. So this is really what I want to focus on right now. So this team server is actually built and I actually have a fully functioning C2 uh, communication um, range that's ready to go, including team server started and the listeners running. And those are the real big pieces I want to show. Um, what does that actually look like? Well, let's look at these, uh, these services that control this. So team server itself, um, this is running on, a, on an Ubuntu server box. This is a standard Linux a uh, service configuration file. Nothing really special here. What really what you care about is what's actually going on. And it's just a wrapper to run the team server command. So in this case, it runs a team server command with all the variables that you need, um, including your own profile. Side note on the profile, I'm actually using this random uh, C2 profile generator that I created so that when I build this entire range, every time I create one, I get a whole fresh CloudFront redirector distribution point and a custom C2 profile. So it's a nice way to quickly spin up a range for testing. Now this little small range that I use is on AWS LightSail and I use it more for testing and I would probably have something a bit more robust if I was doing it for a full red team engagement. Let's go back to looking at the services. So this is a team server service. We also have this listener service and the listener service uh, does the same thing, but instead of wrapping team server, it wraps AG script. And AG script is the headless aggressor module that allows you to run an aggressor script without the Cobalt Strike client. And that's really, really nice. So in this case, what is it doing? It's actually running this listener service.cna file. So what is listener service CNA? It's a regular re aggressor script, nothing really crazy there. Um, it's only functions that it's calling are these listener create ext functions. And these are the functions used to create a listener. So this Linux service calls this aggressor script to create these services. 
all of these variables that, that are actually part of this uh, aggressor script, these can be made um, dynamic if you convert this and these other files to a template. So as you run through the deployment process, these can actually become a template and be used to um, fully automated. And that's exactly what I do to create this. Let's take a look at an actual example. So again, when I created this entire range, this must use a redirector. What I've done is part of my deployment process. When I create the SSH configuration, I actually dynamically build an SSH config file. So I can point to this config file and then use the alias T1 to, to connect to my team server. This actually will proxy it through one SSH connection and pivot to the other. So it allows me to have an indirect connection to this team server. So let's take a look at the actual um, team server service. So when you open up the team server service, what you're seeing are normal team server commands. So if you're running team server, you should see these types of information normally. So team server is running as a service right now. Let's take a look at the listener service. Again, same thing. You can see the AG script is running and actually spitting out console information as well. So nothing crazy there. So these show that these services are running. So if I had to restart this box or restart something, my listeners, my teams or everything would come back normal. So it makes for things to be nice. Um, I know a lot of people who might run their C2 frameworks through maybe a screen command or something and manage it that way. And that's functional, but this adds a little bit uh, more, a uh, little bit more quality of life and a little bit easier to use. So now what do I do here? To actually use this thing, I need to have I need to have a way for my client to talk to the server. So again, using my SSH config file, I use this tunnel, and this tunnel is just going to redirect for 550 to uh, on localhost to the actual team server. So it's creating this SSH tunnel to pivot it over to pivot remotely. Start up Cobalt Strike, and and I'm going to connect to my local host again. The team server is not running here; it is running remotely out here on the uh, in my range that I deployed earlier. So let's connect up. So I've connected, I've connected here a few times, but let's take a look. I've never created listener manually, but when I start this, I actually have listeners ready to go. This is really, really nice. So now, and th these are valid listeners with the valid hosts, the ports, everything configured as part of my dynamic process. So all of these files here, that were in the uh, these service files. I've taken this as a base, converted this into templates, and those templates are used as part of my deployment process. So you, again, I have uh, methods I've done this with um, Bash, and I've also done it with uh, Ansible playbooks. Both are very feasible. It just depends on your selected method of deploying your CT server. So. This is actually really, really nice and nice little fast way to get this going. Uh, as a bonus to this, something I also like to do with aggressor scripts, I use some sort of payload generator. This is a simple one that will generate stageless payloads. And what it does is it will loop through each one of these listeners and create each payload type. What does that actually look like? Well, I have it uh, output to the console. So as it's going, it's saved all my payloads to this path. But what you can see here is, in this case, this is the... Um, um, HTTPS listener, and here are all the HTTPS payloads that it creates. So it goes ahead and creates all of these for you for both architecture types. And this is a nice little cheater to help versus going to um, attacks, packages, and, and working through these menus and filling this out and moving through. This will actually create everything for you. I'm not saying you're going to need them all, but it's just a nice little helper. So I'm a big fan of utilizing aggressor scripts and other tools to enhance your quality of life. So hopefully this was helpful, and in the words of a good friend of mine, good luck and happy hacking.